Oh, that is not the mess. Stay up. I get so into perfection. Like, I hate people filming my swing. Like, that was my worst nightmare right there. I'm just like, oh my God, turn your hips, turn your hips. Stay back, stay back. <laughs> the fact that you made contact is, like, impressive. Welcome to the area, Atlantic Beach area. We're excited to have you here. I'd never been to Jacksonville before we moved here. Um, honestly, it was just the welcoming side of, of Atlantic Beach that really brought me here. We've got older members, younger members, hats are backwards, shirts yeah. are untucked. Uh, I fit right in. I think that golf clubs are now understanding that you know they need to grow the game. I think that they do need to be a little bit more modern with the times. I'm part of the LGBTQ community, and for me, it's all about inclusion. Um, you know, I believe that we're all human beings. It doesn't matter what race, sexuality, your background. I believe that golf is a place where everyone should be welcome, and I'll always fight for that. That was rubbish. So I basically was a footballer, loved it. Uh, been playing football since I was like 18 months old. Used to be pretty good. Um, and then when I was 11, I couldn't play with the boys anymore. So a lot of my kind of boys that I played football with played golf at the local golf club where we kind of were growing up at. And my mum was like, why don't you just try it and see what you think? And I just fell in love with it straight away. But my mum would drop me off at 7.30 in the morning. Um, we'd go out before anybody else and we'd literally play 45 holes a day. And my mum would pick me up at eight o'clock at night. It was like the perfect like daycare really for six weeks holiday. We had a lot of fun and got ourselves into a bit of trouble at the golf club all the time, which was fun. I got pretty decent pretty early on. Got to like scratch when I was 15. Started winning county level and then started winning like English level and then national, you know, European level. And decided to quit school at 7, 16 after my GCSEs. Just thought I could play golf all day. My mum was like, absolutely not. Got me a job at the local Marriott and I was like working behind reception at the gym um, in leisure centre. So I did that for a couple of years and then turned pro at 20. I do get quite nervous in things like this because I feel like the expectation is like, so when you do clinics, people think you don't miss shots. You know what I mean? In the, the good thing is in the way that we edit it, you don't miss No, there we go, perfect. So, That's all good with me. We used to get ourselves in trouble more than anything. Like I remember playing in Hong Kong and it was me, Rory, Ollie, uh, a couple of the girls, I think Henny was there as well. And for some reason after the tournament, we decided to steal a golf buggy and drive around the golf course at midnight and they got the security guards out on us and I've never been so scared in my entire life. Like one of us fell out and yeah, we just, you know, we were just kids. My first event was Australia and I finished fourth there and then I was going to like Monday Q for the Aussie Open. Um, and the guy, the organizer was like, hey, I'd love to give you an invite next week. And I was like, that's amazing. Oh, it's birdie time, boys. Finished third and that kind of, that got me my card. So I, yeah, I played the rest of the season then in, in Europe and played pretty good. I think I won rookie of the year. Which is what I say to people, I'm like, you know, there's more than one ways to do it. Like, there's a lot of girls that miss Q school and they think it's the end of the world. I'm like, there are 100% other ways. I've missed Q school a bunch, like, you know, and you still figure it out. Yeah, I've not got a good track record at, at Q school. Um, the last two times I went, I got through though, which is quite nice. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here in America. I'd be back home and probably working at the same Marriott. I sometimes get too much into practice, especially before a tournament, and that's not a good thing for me. Like, I get too technical and end up getting worse, so I have to go out on the golf course. Like, that's one of the things, like, when I was at the Floridian, obviously, I got to play Brooks a bit, and, like, it's one of the things I kind of learned off him very quickly, was he literally hits balls for 40 minutes. He's like, right, let's go play. And I'm like, whoa, 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 I need to do, like, my four-hour session. And he's like, let's go play. I'm like, okay. I'm not hitting it very good. And then you go out and shoot three or four under, you're like, oh, I'm actually not hitting it. Like, I've got out of that little square grid that I'm just trying to constantly be perfect into like just playing. He literally gets it to the, he's feeling good, then he goes. He does a bit of technique, then he goes and plays. So that was like one of the biggest things I kind of learned from him really. For a four shot lead, yes. But it's just such a fine line, cause you're like, I want to be the best. Like I want to sacrifice so much and be the best. It's just such a fine line between working hard and working smart. Yeah! Read all about it. Mel Reed is an LPGA champion for the first time. When you win, you know, you're like, actually, I didn't do anything much different. I just had a couple lucky breaks here, a couple more putts drop. I was just so determined to win shot right because 
I felt like I'd thrown away Portland a couple of weeks before, and I was like, I'm not letting that happen again. It's just like, someone's gonna have to take this title away from me. <laughs>